I know we've done black prints before, at least. We've, we've sort of mentioned it in another series. But this is going to be a proper look at the whole tank. Now, to begin with, the whole idea of the Black Prince, indeed the infantry tank with a 17-pounder gun, was to produce tanks which had the new, this bigger gun in them. Nothing that they'd made up until this time was capable of taking the bigger gun. <clears throat> they built A30 Challenger, which was the 17-pounder cruiser, if you like, and they decided they'd also build an infantry tank with the same gun. Now, they gave the project to Vauxhall Motors, and you might say that, in a sense, that was asking for trouble because whatever Vauxhall Motors made, it was going to look like a Churchill. They'd done quite well with the Churchill and they just figured that by scaling it up, they'd get a useful tank out of it. Whether they did or not is another matter. So it has got this huge 17-pounder gun in an enlarged turret. And the whole reason that the tank is so much wider than a Churchill is because it has to take the turret ring of a larger turret to get the gun in. So that's sort of 90% of the design, if you like. The basic design is all Churchill. The same sort of suspension, even the same armour thickness. It had 152 millimetres on the front here, exactly the same as the Churchill Mark 7. The only thing they'd done was to slope the front portion of the track frame. The idea was to give the driver a better view over to the right and left. Whether he really got it or not is another matter, but that was why it was done. It was sloped like that. And that was really the logic, such as it was, behind Black Prince. The real horror, in a way, is the engine, which is the thing I've mentioned before. It's got the 350 horsepower flat 12 Bedford in the back, exactly the same engine as they used in the whole range of Churchill tanks. And all the Churchill tanks were a lot lighter than this one. Black Prince weighed about 50 tonnes, and it was really too much for the engine. In fact, the best you could get out of this tank was about 11 miles an hour, which is pointless, really. But that's why it was done, and um, it's got this engine in the back. There are a number of sources which say that it ought to have had the um, Meteor in, the V12 Meteor, which would have given 600 horsepower. But the engine was that could only go in on the tilt because the engine decks are so low and they never installed it. So we never found out whether the tank had any go in it or not. 11 miles an hour is pathetic. And that's about all this thing could do. Now the big issue really was the turret. The turret has the modern type of front with the exposed mantlet, rather a, a standard Stollert and Pitt design at this stage. You'll find the same sort of turret on A34 Comet and on the very early Centurions, exactly the same idea. The odd thing is that the rest of the turret is nothing more than an ugly box. It has no ballistic abilities at all. The sides are flat and square. It's, it takes a five-man crew, same as any other tank, and they do say that there was so much more room inside, the crew liked it. But from the driver's point of view, chap sitting down here, it had a, a rather awkward feature. It had a five-speed gearbox. The Churchill had normally had a four. And this five-speed gearbox would only work properly if you made snappy changes up the box all the time. If you didn't, if you fluffed a gear change or anything like that, the tank slowed down almost at once. And you had to go back to first again and start all over again and build up because the tank had no impetus to keep rolling when it was out of gear. So they needed to change gear and keep going as long as possible. And that really required a good driver to, to learn that skill. And in fact, there was a lot of discussion at one stage because this tank was being produced alongside, more or less, not in a physical sense, but in time, alongside the early Centurions. And although they had a similar turret, in other words, a turret which was largely slab-sided, it was certainly better than the turret on this one. And people were saying, look, if both tanks mount a 17-pounder turret, which is slightly different, one of them must be better than the other. 
And let's assume it's the centurion. Why not put the centurion turret on Black Prince? And there was an argument against it, a rather pointless one as far as I can see. But it, well, I think what it amounted to they, was they couldn't be bothered. The war had ended. The first of these tanks, the prototypes, there were, I think, six of them altogether, had appeared, but too late to see any action, and they were going to be done away with, and most people knew that. So really, it was hardly worthwhile developing the tank at all. But otherwise, it's, it's really a big Churchill, but a very, very slow one. I know many of you watching this, you like either posting comments, agreeing or disagreeing with some of the things we say. You like the content. Can I just say to you then, please, can I encourage you, do support us via the Patreon scheme um, because that helps fund not just us being able to do um, this particular tank chat, but also the staff that needed there, that needed to put them together, to editing, filming. And uh, that's really important that we keep going. I bang on about it all the time. We're an independent charity. We don't get central funding for doing this type of thing. So unless you support us, we're not going, in some manner or another, um, we're not going to be able to carry on doing this. So please, 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 if you do have the uh, capacity to, do sign up to us on Patreon.